Hey guys, today I want to show you a project I've been working on. So it's actually this little box. And this box is what I call a hardware monitor. So it's for my home server. Uh, it uses a tool called NetData, which is installed in the home server. And it uses it for monitoring the server state, like CPU usage, RAM usage, disks, network, and whatnot. Anyway, let's get to the details, let's open this up and then we will get back to the software part as well. Okay, okay, actually before tearing the poor thing apart, let's just uh, ask ourselves a question. Why did I need this device in the first place? Well, the answer is pretty obvious. I'm a maker, so I wanted to do this anyway. And also, in its final form, it will be pretty cool. It will be just sitting on a shelf in the living room, and when visitors come, they will have no clue what that cool-looking device is. And to be honest, even if it may sound childish, I just love blinking LEDs and gadgets all around. Feels like being Tony Stark or something. <laughs> okay, putting jokes aside, so this tool is meant to be generic. It can display information provided by REST API and uh, its source doesn't really matter. It can be a YouTube subscriber counter, a weather station, you name it. But for now, this is a prototype and I will just use it with NetData. Okay, let's open it up. As you will see, uh, the design itself is pretty simple. It's just literally two components plus a 3D printed enclosure. Yes, as you have probably noticed, the LCD panel is the same that I reviewed in my previous video. Actually, it turned out to be quite good for this purpose. Now about this board. It is an interesting hybrid of an Arduino Mega and an ESP8266. While it looks to be a fun and powerful board, actually, for now, this is the weakest link in this whole design. Let me explain why. So this is the board in question. If you check the title, the description, the comments, then you will see that it looks like a top-notch board with a lot of features and basically everyone is suggesting you to instantly buy it. So yeah, go on, buy it. But wait, uh, let's just go deep into the description just for a second. Turns out you will need to use a tiny little set of dip switches to switch functionality because guess what? You cannot access the Mega and the ESP at the same time, but instead you have to switch each time you want to update the firmware on each of them. Finally, after updating the firmware or on any or both of them, you need to switch once again because they cannot work together when they are in USB mode. Obviously, you cannot debug them together either, so this is where working with this board turns to be a nightmare. Anyway, you can still consider this a challenge, right? So did I. So I started writing firmware for the two chips in parallel and tried to work out means for communication between them. So I ended up with something like using the ESP as the main processor and the Mega as a controller for the LCD. Basically, all the information that is fetched through Wi-Fi is processed and converted by the ESP. Then it is simply sent over the serial port to the Mega. The main trick here is that the communication that is done by the serial buffer is basically done through a buffer which is only 16 bytes long and it is not protected against overflow. Meaning that whenever you insert too much data, part of your data will be gone forever. Imagine it like a pipe connecting two containers. Also the trick is that the ESP is significantly faster than the Arduino. So you will need to adjust the speed of the ESP via delays to achieve at least some level of synchronization. Without set synchronization, the much faster ESP will quickly overflow the buffer without the Mega ever having a chance to read all the data from inside. Now let's see the actual Arduino code. So this is the code for the 80 Mega part and as such it is the easier one. Most of this code is about setting up the LCD and displaying stuff. 
The only tricky part here is receiving. Basically the data that arrives here is expected to come in multiple packages. So what we do here is just uh, concatenating those packages. We also keep our eye out for a start and an end marker. In case of the start marker, we just empty the buffer, whereas in case of the end marker, we display the already existing data. Now about the ESP part. So we are fetching data from NetData in multiple turns here. Actually, it is possible that it can be done in a more sophisticated way, but for now, I cannot figure out how to filter the JSON response returned by net data. So it's either one huge response or many small ones. And uh, actually, the Arduino JSON library uh, that I use here for parsing the JSON response could make things really complicated in case of a huge JSON. So I chose to stick with multiple small service calls. Okay, I have to admit that my C coding skill is a bit rusty, but uh, I tried my best here to protect this code against memory leaks and stuff like that. So what we are doing here, what this code does, is collects all the data into smaller buffers and uh, concatenates it to a main buffer, which in the end will be uh, transmitted to, through the stereo port in uh, 16 byte packets. This is basically the last part near the bottom of the screen. You can also observe those extra delays I mentioned before. So sadly, we have to intentionally slow down the ESP here. A more sophisticated solution obviously could be to wait for some kind of response from the Mega. But to be honest, I didn't really want to bother with this. We will get back to this later. Now let's take a quick look on the actual uh, data gathering code part here. So it's actually quite easy and the Arduino JSON library is pretty convenient to use. It is also well documented and uh, comes with an assistant tool, which is an online tool that based on your JSON structure will help you by calculating buffer size for you and even providing example code. Since the response that NetData provides for each of the service calls is similar in structure but still different, so is the parsing code. The rest of this file is pretty much the usual ESP8266 code, so setting up Wi-Fi and stuff like that. The settings are in a different header file, called settings.h. Obviously the NetData URLs are specific to my homeland, so you will need to replace those, similarly to the Wi-Fi credentials. So I mentioned the net data quite a few times already, but what if you don't know it yet? Don't worry, let's quickly check out net data. So net data is an open source project, and to be honest, it's quite a high quality one. Its main goal is to have your Linux server monitored, uh, including all the network, disk, processor state and whatnot. It provides an extremely large set of data about your server and um, as you can see it is quite well documented and uh, there's a lot of features. Installing that data is pretty easy. It can run in your cloud instance, your Linux server, in a docker container, in a VM or even on a Raspberry Pi. Once you have installed it, its REST API is ready to provide data for you. Anyway, I will leave discovering the rest of that data for you if you are interested. Now let's talk about the future of this gadget. So I obviously want to continue working on it. This is just a prototype, but looks interesting. Unfortunately, this Arduino hybrid board has to go. I already pulled the trigger on a different board, which is an ESP32 based one and can work nicely together with this LCD. Having a different board also means I will have to adjust the enclosure, but that's not really a problem. I designed it myself in Fusion. Also, I have plans for some improvements regarding the enclosure as well. Finally, I have some bigger improvements in mind for the software part as well, like a configuration UI and whatnot. So, I would say stay tuned for a version 2 of this little box. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, 
then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.